My name is Melanie Aaron, and I was ordained as a rabbi in 1981. I'm here to speak about anti-Semitism or anti-Jewish prejudice and discrimination, a form of racism. I call it racism, even though Jews aren't a race, but are of many different races, because anti-Semitic racism isn't dependent on a person being a follower of the religion called Judaism. It's the result of people feeling that there's some kind of Jewishness that is inherent in someone, even if religiously they become a Christian or an atheist. I've lived in the United States for almost all of my life, and I don't feel I've been a victim of anti-Semitism. And yet, as a child, I was aware of my neighbors and teachers who had numbers tattooed on their arms by the Nazis. My father had attended New York University Uptown because the college was sensitive about being called NY Jew and didn't want too many Jewish students at their main campus in Greenwich Village. When we moved to Cincinnati, we knew that Jews couldn't buy houses in certain neighborhoods. As an adult, when I bought a home in California, I learned that it had a restrictive covenant on the deed. That is something that before the fair housing legislation would have prevented it from being sold to a Jew or to a person of color. Throughout my life, I've been asked if I come from New York, which I experience as being asked if I was a Jew. My best friend in high school's mother was born in Stuttgart, Germany. She was the only member of her family to survive and there was a certain sadness about her. Later, when I was already an adult, she committed suicide on Holocaust Memorial Day out of guilt for not being able to save her family. My friend's father was a chemist, but was limited in where he could work because many companies didn't hire Jews in those years. Incidentally, this past fall, my friend's husband was a volunteer in the campaign for the Democratic governor of Michigan while her brother and his family, even though he's a physician, are not vaccinated. Families can be like that. Maybe yours is too. Incidentally, 78% of Jews voted for Obama in 2008, which is high for an ethnic group considered white. Typically in American presidential elections, three quarters of Jews vote for the Democratic candidate and 15 to 25% vote Republican. A little history. Jews have been present in the area known as the United States since 1654, when a group of bedraggled Jewish refugees from the Inquisition in Brazil arrived. Most, but not all of the Jews in America come originally from Europe, a place of centuries of Jewish persecution, much of it stemming from religious prejudice. There were massacres of Jewish communities, particularly during the Crusades and following accusations against the Jews for causing the bubonic, bubonic plague. The largest migration of Jews to America came in the late 19th and early 20th century when violent attacks on Jews worsened in Eastern Europe. This was a period of increased immigration to the United States overall, which was followed by a rise of intolerance in the United States. It was at that time considered obvious that immigrants from Southern Europe, like Italians, and from Eastern Europe, like Jews, along with the Irish, were suboptimal immigrants who could never be assimilated and become proper Americans, like those from Northern Europe. If you look at the newspapers from that period, what they say about Jews and other immigrants will feel reminiscent of things said today about immigrants from Mexico and Latin America. Immigration laws changed drastically after World War I, cutting the numbers of immigrants from these problematic populations. This meant that during the 1930s, with the rise of the Nazis in Germany, very, very few Jews were able to enter the United States. A recent documentary by Ken Burns showed how, due to anti-Semitism within the State Department, even those very small quotas were not filled at a time when Jews were desperate to leave Europe. A small number of Jewish survivors were allowed into this country after the war, but by then six million Jews, two thirds of the total Jewish population of Europe had been killed during the Holocaust. Today, Jews are about 2% of the population in the United States, less than 1% of the world's population, 
but are much more visible because of living primarily in major urban areas. Small numbers though don't prevent the Jewish community from being viewed as dangerous. At the time of the rise of Hitler in 1933, the Jews were approximately, uh, were less than 1% of the German's population, yet they were blamed for all of Germany's problems. Despite Jewish small numbers in the United States and in the world, conspiracy theories often present the Jews as extremely powerful, controlling world events as puppeteers behind the scenes. Old forgeries like the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, which originally was created in Tsarist Russia and then published in America by Henry Ford, continue to get distributed. Classic literature like Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist contains ugly Jewish caricatures and continues to be required readings in high schools. Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion of the Christ, portrayed the Jews and not the Romans as having killed Christ something that the Catholic Church denounced 60 years ago, along with the mainline Protestant denominations. Most concerning today, Jews are the target of white supremacists, white nationalists, who are the perpetrators of most of the violence against Jews and other minorities in this country. A synagogue in Pittsburgh was attacked in 2018, the most deadly attack on Jews in this country's history. The synagogue had a sign in front supporting Hayas, an organization that helps to resettle immigrants. The attacker saw Jews as the brains behind the movement to replace real Americans with people of color. We heard that also in the chants at the now infamous Charlottesville March in 2017. Recently, the taking of hostages at a synagogue in Texas was the result of the delusional ideas about Jewish power and the ability of a rabbi to order the release of a terrorist from an American prison. Unfortunately, conspiracy theories continue to be present at both extremes of the political spectrum and social media has made things worse. These ideas are hard to uproot with factual information often having little effect. Since 2016, there has been a significant increase in anti-Semitic violence and the FBI estimates that Jews at 2% of the American population are the target of 60% of religiously motivated hate greater than any other religious group. When I was a child in New York, I used to ride on the subway with my grandmother. If we ever said anything that would indicate we were Jewish, she would shush us. She never wore anything visible that might give away her identity. I live in Washington, D.C. now, and I ride the metro with my grandson. I want to live in an America where we can wear our Hanukkah sweaters without fear and talk about whatever we want to in public. Thank you. Mm -hmm.